Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about uh, nested definitions. So we're going to start with an example that will motivate uh, the need to do nested definitions uh, and it will be apparent. We're talking about definitions as we learn them with the keyword define uh, that are able to be used inside a function's body or a function declaration's body as we've seen in the previous video when we were playing with um, exercises for lists. So first thing we want to do, oops, I already gave you the solution. So first thing we want to do is we want to write a function that counts from one to x. So if we pass it one, it should return a list with just one. And if we pass it two, it goes one, two, and it's five, it's one, two, three, four, five. So I just went ahead and I copy pasted the example. And if I run it, I get fails. Everything fails, of course. As you can see, there's lang racket here to make sure this is a, a racket file. And then we're loading the testing module. And then what I did was I kind of went ahead and um, explained what we expect somehow to kind of find uh, the recursive step. That's what you should be doing when you think about a recursive function is you look at it you look at a return value and you try to decompose it in terms of you know the base case so in this case what is the base case i guess uh, the base case for you can even simplify this so if we get to one then that is a, the base case let's say it's not defined for zero or anything other than zero so it has to start in one and if it starts with one um what we do it returns a list with one right that's what we expected so that would be the base case right um and then if there's two it's going to be how do we decompose this list in terms of um the recursive step right well we know that two is the parameter given and the remaining is the list of one and what is the list of one well that's count up for one so we can decompose this list in terms of its count up from one plus a list with two. That would be another way of thinking, where, where plus is concatenation of lists. Uh, and in the general case where you have one, two, three, four, five, that would be count up from four, right? Because um, these parameters. A list with four is the same as calling count up four and passing parameter four, and then you add the list with just five there, right to the right. So that would be one way. But how do we implement uh, the plus? We don't know how to do that concatenation of lists. We haven't learned that yet, and that's subject for a future uh, lecture. So for now, let's try to do it uh, from the ground up, uh, not implementing count uh, a append or concatenation of lists but instead by implementing this function directly and it might not seem very obvious but if you think about um, or read this hint maybe it will make more sense so what you can do when you have a function that it's not very obvious where you start from uh, maybe you could define things in terms of count where a function count an auxiliary function sorry so to kind of simplify this maybe we make a um, an auxiliary function that is more general and by being more general it's easier to define uh, the recursive step okay so let's see how we could do this so um, okay so maybe we want to rewrite this but in terms of count okay so what is uh, counting one well counting one could just be uh, count where the lower bound is one and the upper bound is one, and that becomes a list with one, right? Uh, and here you would get something like, okay, count up. Okay, maybe that's the same as writing count of uh, one to two, right? Which becomes, uh, okay, so if I think about count from one to two, that is perhaps a bit more interesting because then I could think of count from one to two as I could do a cons, right, of one, or maybe I could do um, cons of what? 
So I want my list to be one, two, right? And I want to write this in terms of a recursive step. So another way I could do this is I could say that, um, well, this is something plus the recursive call and maybe the recursive call, we can play with the parameters so that by incre incrementing them, until they reach the base case. So what does that mean? Well, we could do maybe what we have is count of two, two. Okay, um, so count from one to two is the same as cons of one plus count of two to two. Okay, so what is count of two to two, right? We are counting from two to two. Well, that would reach the base case, right? So if that reaches the base case, then uh, count from two to two would be the list with two. And what is, um, if we do it this way, then you would get count of one of list two, which would become list one, two, right? So what one way of thinking about this is um, when we call count up from one to two, these two things are basically the parameters of count. Okay, so now to kind of reframe this, let's let's just create some tests uh, so that it makes more sense. So now we're going to create tests just for count. Okay, uh, what we want is count from one to one. That would be this. Then let's do this. Okay, so this would be count from two to three. Then we can even write this one, which would be count from one to five. Okay, so this will be next. But for now, let's just define count. And we do lower bound, upper bound. Okay, and now what do we do? Well, we know that here, this is the base case. So if this is the base case, that means that count of one, one is list of one, right? This we know. So what is the base case? Is it when the value is one or is it when the two arguments are the same or the two parameters, the lower bound and the upper bound are equal? So because this is more general, we actually don't really care about what the lower bound is. Actually, what we could make, because think about it, if we were to do count of two, two, that should be the list with just the number two, right? Because what we want to do is to count from two to up to two. So the return of that should be the list two. So in this case, we're not decrementing the lower bound until it becomes zero, like in a lot of recursive algorithms we're doing. In this case, count kind of works differently. It works when the lower bound matches the upper bound then we reach the base case. So let's do that. So what we need is a conditional, right? Where we want to do equal. If the lower bound matches the upper bound, then we got to the base case. And what do we return? Well, we have to return a list with a single number. So let's do return lower bound or upper bound because they're the same. Otherwise, what do we do? Well, let's see this example. So this is the base case. Okay, so the, the recursive step. Recursive step is right here, it's very simple. Okay, so if we have two of three, that's the same thing, right? Okay, so if we know that the thing stops when it when the two values are the same, so how will how will it stop? Well, it should stop when count becomes three three, right?
I guess there are two ways. You could go up or you could go down. But essentially, th if the base case is when both arguments meet, either either you are incrementing the lower bound or you're decrementing the upper bound, right? And you will see that if you increment the upper bound, it will be easier because you'll be adding elements to the list on the right. So let's think about that this way. Okay, so it will be count of two or three will be cons of two, right? Because the list is going to be list two, three, right? So that's the same as adding to the left. You always want to add in the left so that you can use cons. Um, and if I add two to the left, then the recursive step is going to be this. Why? Because that's the same as cons of two of list three. Right, so what we want to do in the recursive step? Well, the recursive step, what we want to do is we want to do cons of lower bound. And then what we could call is count, where we increment the upper bound, right? Sorry, the lower bound. And the upper bound remains the same. Okay. See if this works. Okay. So it's breaking here, which are the tests for count up. So it is working. So we can let's print here just so that you guys are convinced that it works. Ten to twenty. If I run it, I get ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and so on. So it is it looks good. It's doing what we expect. Okay, so now we should be able to define count from 1 to x, right? So what would that be? Well, that should be pretty easy. It should just be count from 1 to x, right? And we call that. And what we see is a function calling another, which is fine. I mean, you've used that since you've used numeric functions. And here you're calling plus, you're calling cons, and so on. And now you see that all tests pass, which means the thing is working. Okay, so this is the solution. And next what we're going to do is we're going to start refactoring this code. Because what we would like to do is kind of hide this. And we'll see why we want to do that. 